Please share your thoughts in comments and like this video. Previously, Orin, an enchanter was kicked out of the hero's party as the leader Oliver believed that he was not skilled enough them. Even though, Orin changed his job from swordsman to enchanter for the sake of the party, he was discarded at end. So he decided to become swordsman once again as per his wish. He went to the dungeon and saved a girl who was discarded by her party members. The girl named Saved Sophia seemed to be the sister of the ace of Silver Rabbit Guild, Selma. Silver Rabbit is the rival guild of the hero's party. Coincidentally, Selma met him. She proposed him a job to serve as a guide for the dungeon collaboration for rookies in their guild. Unlike the hero's party, Selma and Rabbit Guild leader, Vince, valued Orin highly for his abilities. So they planned to have a meeting with him. The next day, Orin went to the alchemist's shop and met a familiar old man. He wanted to buy healing potions as he would be heading to a great dungeon from tomorrow onwards. The Gramps welcomed Orin to his general store with a warm smile. The Gramps had always treated Orin who had no relatives like his own son. So he's somewhat of a granddad to him. Orin asked the Gramps to take his time as he knew that the influx of customers had just calmed down. He was glad that the Grampa's business was thriving. But the Gramps attributed his success to Orin of the Heroes Party who advertised his shop, so he was grateful to Orin for that. Orin decided to tell everything to the Gramps. He revealed how he was not a member of the Heroes Party anymore. So he won't be able to advertise the Gramps' goods like before. Since he won't have any influence as he was no longer a part of the Heroes Party. He apologized to the Gramps and felt sad as he wasn't even able to repay someone who had been taking care of him. But the Gramps patted Orin as there was nothing to worry about. He was more than happy to talk with someone like Orin who had a nice character. The Gramps wanted to do business using his own support. He was thankful to Orin as he had already done more than enough for him. Orin was surprised to hear that, and mentioned that he was the one who was thankful for his kindness towards him. The Gramps watched Orin and believed that he had endured quite a lot this time. But Orin didn't want to cry about something like that. Seeing his adamant figure, the Gramps consoled him. He mentioned that it was alright to cry a little when things get painful for him. After hearing his kind words, Orin began to cry and vented his frustration there. He was grateful to the Gramps once again for his kindness. Orin went to the appointed meeting place and greeted Selma there. Selma asked him to follow after her. As they were going on, Selma mentioned that Orin's face seemed brighter than yesterday. She believed that Orin had made his resolve over the hero's party. Orin also confirmed that and they went for a meeting inside the Silver Rabbit headquarters. This had happened in the days that had well passed. Two adults were watching the fight between Oliver and Orin. They praised Oliver's skills as he was someone worthy of the title, hero. But on the other hand, they deemed Orin as an ordinary child even though he was called a prodigy back in the days. As the fight progressed between them, Oliver managed to knock Orin's sword and defeated him. The two adults also decided to let Oliver carry on their will. They believed that to be an ideal choice. They decided to use the once called prodigy as a shield for the hero. Orin exclaimed that he had lost. But he still smiled and exclaimed that he couldn't beat Oliver anymore. But Oliver was mad as it seemed that Orin hadn't fought him seriously. He didn't want the fight to end easily as he was more amazing than him in the past but his skills didn't improve for the last few years. Orin believed that Oliver was overestimating him and mentioned that he had indeed fought at his best. He mentioned that Oliver had grown stronger and there's no way he could defeat a genius like him. But Oliver refused to believe that crap. He still didn't believe that he had overtaken Orin and was determined to defeat him when he was serious one day. But Orin still mentioned that he had indeed fought seriously in a carefree manner. But Oliver refused to believe that. He was determined to make Orin fight him seriously. So he left that place with that determination. After Oliver left, Orin who was on the ground refused to have a situation where he wanted to fight Oliver seriously because he didn't want to kill Oliver and he didn't want him to die because of him. But his thoughts were interrupted by a girl who mentioned it was a shame. The girl's name is Cheyenne and Orin was surprised to see her there. He got up and was embarrassed to let Cheyenne witness his lame figure. But she believed that Orin was cool in that fight. She mentioned that she knew his true abilities. 
But Oren denied that and mentioned that his weakness was his true ability. He believed that it was all due to his weak resolve. His power was weak in the eyes of the adults who had talent in everything but lacked any special trait. He blamed himself as Oliver had to bear the burden of expectations of his village because of him. He wanted to do something for Oliver. Seeing Oren like that, Cheyenne promised to not leave him alone like that. She wanted to become strong enough to stand beside him. Oren was surprised to hear that. Cheyenne wanted to become strong enough so that they could defeat something in the future. She was the same as Oren and wanted to be always by his side. Even if Oren went beyond her reach, Cheyenne was determined to catch up. That's why she asked him to not shoulder this burden alone. Oren was moved to hear that. He then proposed to walk Cheyenne to the carriage as it was already late. He moved ahead and Cheyenne asked him to wait for her. She then noticed Oren was crying. She believed that he cried because he was moved by her words earlier, but Oren refused that it was not. He wanted Cheyenne to tease him only when she reached his level. Cheyenne countered that since he had been fighting his best earlier, she believed that she had already surpassed him if he was only at that strength. Oren berated Cheyenne for being cheeky as always. Cheyenne mentioned that even though what they said seemed like a joke, she vowed to catch up to him so that they would be able to fight alongside in the future. Until then, she wanted Oren to be her guiding light. Oren also agreed to serve like that so that Cheyenne won't lose her way. He walked with her to the carriage and Cheyenne boarded it. He said his farewell to her. The current Oren apologized to Cheyenne as he couldn't be that guiding light in the end. Because after this something happened to everyone but it wasn't revealed what it was. Since Oren managed to wake up from his sleep. He felt that it was a strange dream. He couldn't even remember Cheyenne's face after waking up. He couldn't remember anything at all. He went through some precious times but he had yet to remember them. The fateful day arrived where Oren had to serve as a guide in the exploration for the Silver Rabbit Guild's rookies. He went to the Southern Great Dungeon's entrance where the rookies of the guild were gathered. Selma greeted him there along with her sister, Sophia. Oren also greeted them back and went near them. He noticed that Sophia seemed totally different from before. Sophia wore the guild's rookie uniform and Oren complimented that it looked good on her. Sophia was taken back to hear a compliment and thanked Oren back while blushing. The sister's lover, Selma, was shocked to see her cute sister blushing. She berated Oren for being skilled at flirting and inquired whether he had any lover. Oren denied that and believed that he had gotten used to it as he had lived with female members of the hero's party. Selma came to her senses after that explanation as it was indeed true that the hero's party members lived in the same mansion. Sophia asked Oren about where he was living now and Oren answered that he was living by himself in an inn. He also revealed his plans about finding himself a new house. The sister lover was shocked to see her sister ask that question and wondered if Sophia was planning to live together with Oren. Sophia was embarrassed to hear that and called Selma as stupid. But Selma felt down as she heard the word stupid. Oren couldn't help but laugh at this drama. After some time, they managed to calm down. Selma inquired why Oren was standing at a distance from the group. Oren replied that he didn't want the rookies to feel tense around him as he was an outsider. Since it would make them more nervous when they were already looking tense in their first time exploring the dungeon. But Selma planned to use Oren to relieve that tension among the rookies. She asked Sophia to group up with her party members and shocked Oren to follow her. Oren wondered what Selma would make him do. He was sure that there was something definitely going on with that collaborative exploration. With his doubts, he followed Selma. The previous night when he had reached the Silver Rabbit of the Night Sky's headquarters. As per their agreement, he went over to their headquarters. He was introduced to their clan captain, Vince, and was filled in about the plans of the collaborative exploration from Selma. To summarize the points, the exploration will take three days. Their destination would be the Great Southern Dungeon, moving from the first floor all the way to the 51st floor. In consideration of the rookies, they would prevent camping outside and return daily when they reached the target number of floors, there would be 10 rookie parties participating in this operation. Five guide leaders, including Selma and Oren would be in charge of the parties. 
the fight with the monsters would be conducted on a rotational basis from the two parties. Furthermore, if an unexpected event were to occur, the guild leader would be taking care of it. Selma explained it all and felt glad since Oren was sharp on the wits. But Oren felt that it looked like a forced march. Selma inquired Oren if he had any questions and Oren mentioned that he indeed had one. He wondered why there were only five guide leaders for ten rookie parties. If they wanted to push through with such a reckless plan, Oren felt that it would be better to bring along several A-rank parties to support the rookie party to reduce the risks. Selma agreed with Oren's opinion that it was such a reckless plan. But she believed that a few risks would lead to the growth of the rookies and believed that it would be a great opportunity for them. But Oren knew that the explanation was just for the surface. That's a plan that focused more on the ends rather than the means. So he knew that there would be more reasons than that. But Oren was sure that they didn't plan on sharing those reasons with him. In the end, he decided to take on that job. Selma thanked him for his help and revealed that the reward would be two gold coins in advance, and ten gold coins when Oren finished the mission. Oren was shocked to hear such a huge amount. He was happy to get a high amount but he wondered why they were paying him that much. With that amount, he would be able to live normally for at least a year. Selma explained that it was because she values him highly. Oren was surprised to hear that and mentioned that he would do his utmost best at his job tomorrow. The scene shifted to the present where Selma and Oren went to meet the other three party guides. But in the last meeting, the captain of theirs didn't even say a word. Oren still had some doubts over the content of his job. As Oren greeted the other three guides, he was surprised. Selma introduced Oren to them and vouched for his abilities. The others teased Oren as they could rely on him more as Selma seemed to have a high opinion about him. Oren became flustered and asked them to not raise the hurdle for him. He then composed himself and introduced himself to others, he introduced himself as a frontline attacker rather than enchanter. The other three also introduced themselves. The two boys in the group were Arnold and Anselm who were defenders. The girl's name is Kathy who was a healer. Oren found that they had only one attacker and one enchanter. He wondered what they had planned to do if he had joined their team as an enchanter. But he had to agree that it was a balanced composition. He once again felt that there's something odd about this operation. After their introductions, Selma proposed to greet the rookies as well. They gathered all the rookies and Slima gave the speech before them. She revealed their plans about reaching the 51st floor of that dungeon. She could see that everyone was feeling tense as they were scared to advance towards the middle floors so suddenly. Normally, rookies would only enter a dungeon after another year of training. She asked the rookies to not worry as they had invited a strong helper to deal with unexpected events. She introduced Oren to the rookies as someone who had reached the 94th floor which their guild didn't even accomplish yet. The rookies soon became restless and discussed among them how amazing that was. Since only the hero's party had managed to attain that place, Selma revealed that Oren was part of that. She was sure that he was more familiar than anyone else when it comes to the dungeon. The tense atmosphere soon disappeared and everyone was excited. But Oren became tense as he felt that the rookies were getting way too excited. Since the hero's party was very popular, the students felt that it was easy to accomplish 51st floor with Oren. With a renewed determination. Selma started their exploration. The rookies all cheered with great enthusiasm. On the other hand, Oren was restless. He never thought that Selma would use him to relieve the tension. But she was quite proud of her achievements. She asked everyone to stand by with their parties and asked the guide leaders to do one final checkup. Oren asked why Selma had made the rookies too excited as he was concerned about it. But Selma felt that it was fine and asked the guide to lead them thoroughly. She then asked Oren to be responsible for the 9th and 10th squadron. She revealed that the 10th squad had the most promising ones of all. If they refined their teamwork, Selma was sure that they would be able to proceed smoothly without much issues. So she counted on Oren for his guidance. But Oren felt uncomfortable as the guild left the promising rookies to an outsider like him. He introduced himself to the rookies and they were all excited to have Oren as their guide. 
Oren was shocked to find the reaction from them which he would get because he was being in the hero's party. Soon he noticed that Sophia was also in the tenth squad and she smiled brightly at him. He then asked everyone for their names and positions. He also confirmed that no one was late and absent from both of those squads. The tenth squad which had Sophia had only three members in it. He found it rare as the fewer members there were in the party, the more dangerous it was. It was especially higher, if they were rookies. The boy in the tenth squad explained that it was because no one was able to keep up with them. Oren was disappointed to see that boy's action. They may be promising but he was too confident of his abilities which made Oren worry about his future. In the end, he decided to ask everyone to start their introductions. The boy from the tenth squad introduced himself as Logan Hayward who was also the leader of that squad. His position is an enchanter and he proclaimed himself as a man who would surpass Selma, the world's best enhancer once day. Oren became dejected to see a confident one. Next another girl raised her hand. She introduced herself as Caroline Inglod and her position is defender. Oren inquired why she was wearing only light armor if she was a defender. He wondered if she was gonna change it when they were gonna head in. But Caroline proclaimed herself as a defender who doesn't wear any kind of gear or armor. Oren became dejected once again and found that she was an evasion-type defender. Caroline explained that she didn't like to touch those magical beasts. But she also wants to kill as many of them as possible. So she became the position that is closest to them. Evasion-type defenders usually use their speed to hold the monsters in one place instead of confronting them. Caroline seemed to want to fight like that. But Oren knew that the evasion defender would find it difficult to accumulate battle experience. So he wondered why no one objected to her role in deciding that position. Logan explained that Caroline stuck to that position even though many objected to her choice. Caroline counters that Logan would always ignore the instructions of the instructors and he didn't get to slang her. Logan proclaimed that he was exempted from listening as he was excellent. In the end, Oren found that they were all problem childs. In the end, Sophia introduced herself and her position as a magician and a rear attacker. She greeted Oren with a warm smile. Oren didn't know why but that normal introduction put him at ease. Sophia went to stop the quarreling Logan and Caroline. Oren watched that and believed that his mission was a lot harder than he had thought. They all entered the dungeon and the collaborative exploration finally began. Even though the rookies were all fired up earlier, Oren was amazed to see them become quiet after entering the dungeon. Caroline called out to Oren and asked why someone from the hero's party was joining them for exploration. She wondered if they didn't find the Silver Rabbit as their rival clan. Oren explained that he was no longer a part of the hero's party and Selma had already mentioned it in her speech. She knew that the hero's party was always cautious of the silver rabbit and paid attention to their activities. So she wondered why Oren had quit. She felt that it was such a waste for Oren to quit that party as it was a target of admiration. Oren didn't like her to probe into his past. Even though it seemed that Caroline didn't look like she had any ulterior motives, Oren was not good with people like that. He refused to explain and Caroline teased him as a cheapskate. Then she confirmed that Oren was acquainted with Sophia. She revealed that Sophia had been telling them that a fantastic person was going to join them for this operation. Sophia became embarrassed to hear that. Caroline was sure that the fantastic person was Oren and Sophia also confirmed that. She revealed that she was once saved by Oren before. She clearly saw how strong he was. Furthermore he was from the hero's party and her sister, Selma also said that she would be relieved if Oren was there. She vouched for Oren's abilities. Caroline listened to it and inquired why she wasn't loosening up a little more since they had someone from the hero's party. Oren remarked about how he had already left the hero's party. But Oren clearly noticed Caroline's actions. She had initiated a conversation to loosen Sophia's tensions. He was surprised to find that Caroline was a thoughtful girl. They moved further into the dungeon but the monsters spotted them. It was a pair of wolves. It considered them as easy prey and leaped forward to attack them. Oren noticed them and a magic circle activated from the ground. Soon sharp stone pillars emerged and killed those wolves. 
both of the wolves died by having their bodies with numerous holes. Oren confirmed that the traps had been working properly. It's a time-based magic trap. To time the trap, it takes a certain degree of skill but the moment one sets it up, it's hard for anyone to notice it. If it goes smoothly, they would be able to deal with the monsters on their rear without much effort. Since their time was extremely limited, they couldn't afford to waste any time with pointless combat there. They managed to reach the 20th floor of the dungeon. Caroline inquired Oren about how far till they had to reach the floor's boss. Oren answered that it would take 10 minutes if they continued at their current pace. Caroline felt bored as the 10th floor finished early. But Oren was glad as it seemed that they would be able to finish earlier than they had planned without any problems. He had been observing the three of them and how they fought. He had his doubts about that three-man squad initially but they were fine. Firstly Logan, he thought Logan was just an arrogant rookie but his skills as an enchanter were definitely high. If Logan could keep up with the long-term combat, Oren was sure that he would be able to fit into an A-rank party without any problems. He was a prodigy without a doubt. Though, Oren felt that it was unfortunate that his instructions as an enchanter were mediocre. But he was sure that Logan could become stronger if he accumulated combat experiences. Secondly, Caroline, she's aiming to be a speed-based defender. Though she might possess great speed, she had two flaws. The first flaw is that she had a tendency to rush in recklessly. A defender fighting closely was good but Oren got worried watching her do it. Her second flaw was that she wielded two daggers. Its compatibility with her may be good but it didn't pair up with her party's skill sets. That was all he could think about them. Lastly Sophia, she seemed inferior compared to the other two but her skills had already surpassed that of a rookie standard. Though her indecisiveness was a problem, it could be compensated for if she interacted more with her team members. She didn't seem to have any obvious flaws as a rookie so Oren was interested in her growth in the future. The ninth squad he was in charge of also had room for improvement. Soon they heard a huge growl of a monster. It seemed the other three guides had managed to defeat the 20th floor boss monster. They stopped at the 20th floor for that day but Oren didn't expect it to go that smoothly. He believed that he had underestimated the Silver Rabbit Guild. Selma complimented everyone for their work. She wanted to go to the 21st floor but that was scheduled for the next day. So she asked everyone to register their card on that floor as they could teleport there from the entrance. The rookies lined up and registered their cards. Everyone was happy with their achievements. In the end, everyone teleported to the entrance of the dungeon instead of camping there. Selma thanked Oren for his hard work. Oren also complimented her. Selma then inquired about the rookies. Oren explained that the 9th squad had room for improvements and the 10th squad was exceptional as she had said. But their coordination was non-existent. Oren especially worried about Caroline as it would affect her if she was remained like that. Selma explained that Caroline might be like that but she had improved a lot compared to the past. Oren wondered how Caroline was in the past. They ended their conversation there and planned to meet there the next day. The next day, Oren woke up and read the newspaper. He exclaimed that it had turned out as he had feared. Please like and subscribe to see whether Oren and Selma managed to end the collaboration safely. Click on the notifications icon for more interesting stories like this.